So how do you do RAG on multimodal data? In today's episode of Systematically Improving RAG Applications, Nina from Unstructured is going to talk about the implementation details of multimodal RAG systems for unstructured data. We're going to focus on a specific use case in educational technology. We're going to cover the challenges of incorporating various data sources and types beyond pure text and provide insights into more practical solutions. We currently support 24 different file types and we have more in flight. You just drop in a PDF and then they generate a slideshow with images or tables. I actually wish I had something like this when I was making my slide. Quite a slow one, you guys, when you're improving that. I'm going to be talking about multimodal RAG on unstructured data, focusing on a case study in EdTech with a company named Arena. And I am a staff developer relations at Unstructured. I've worked previously at several other startups in NLP and NLU, and before that in venture capital in a machine learning research group. Below. Today, I'm going to go over challenges in adding data types and sources beyond pure text. The data distributions that we see in practice, some considerations when we're going to be evaluating RAG beyond pure text, and then I'll spend most of the time on the case study, Elena, getting into the recipe of how you pull, extract images and tables and other non-text elements using unstructured. Uh, I can talk a little bit about the challenges in adding both data types and sources. I'll start with data types. So we currently support 24 different file types and we have more in flight. That includes a lot of different plain text file types, uh, a lot of different images, JPEG, clips, DMT, uh, screenshots. And then a lot of different document types, PDFs, PowerPoint. And some of the challenges are that, one, you need a data loader for each file type, as well as their metadata. It depends on how you want to handle your metadata. I've heard of some folks just taking it just from the document itself, but we also have other metadata that we gather from within the document that varies by document type. Then you'll have some challenges in standardizing that output between these different formats, like what the page in some kind of document that has no pages, but what are you going to display or chunk within a PDF or a PowerPoint, which are all pretty different documents. You'll have to think about how the heterogeneous pre-processing type arm and model training. So if you have predominantly one type of file, but you want to include other ones, you'll have to worry about opening for that predominant model and then also potentially keeping different models all up to date. And then you'll have to think about encoding and alignment for the images and tables and other non-text elements in there. And then of course, if you have a system that you've already built for text, you will have to think about increases in latency when you're exciting images and how you want to manage those. So these are just some of the considerations that we've come across. One big challenge is the heterogeneity of document layouts. Really, there's infinite ways that we could arrange titles and content on various documents. And so making sure that you're trained well for that, take your model well. And in addition to that, there's also the challenge of reading order whether they're going across and then down or down and then across for some of these different document layouts like mentioned. And then there specifically are challenges for adding images. So there's an example of a pipeline we use for processing a PDF in our platform, which is currently in beta. We have our high res model extract this one because we have images and text and tables in here. Otherwise, we have a fast pipeline if the PDF, for example, only had text for a few. Really want to, you don't want to use a more powerful model than you need to to keep computational costs down. And so then this is separated into this text section, this photo, and then this table. And so we have different processing pipelines. We have OCR for the text. In the platform, we have a multimodal LLM to generate a summary of this image which will also be outputting into text. In addition, in our metadata, we will have the base64 encoding of the image as well. And then the table, we have a separate table processing model for. So then in the JSON, we'll have the table and we have that in text and HTML format in the metadata. Specifically for adding images, you have to think about different models, different approaches, and all the different things that you want to capture about that image. And then in addition, if you want to support a lot of different sources, there are also different challenges there. So I could teach about a bit as well. We have 28 that we support anything from extra DB to, to GitHub to Notion. It's just a lot of different places where you might have all different kinds of files. You can include images and 
other attachments and things. And challenges in adding sources as well are for the extraction. So you will have the access configuration for each one. You want to make sure that this indication is secure. And then you have to think a lot about handling the API. So then you've got to manage that one in addition to yours. So the errors, the timeout, we often have to build in delays so that we don't hit API overuse errors. And then also mapping that metadata. And so you really want to make sure that you're you have the data governance and you're compliant with any security concerns around that data and this transmission. So when you put it all together, when you start thinking about having multimodal RAG with a lot of different sources and a lot of different file pipes, there's a lot of different steps to the process. So I'm really focusing on kind of the left side of this image. And you have to think about keeping connectors up to date, adapting pipelines to novel data types as you may want to add those, managing prompts and uptime for any third party dependencies that you're using for more complex data or functions, the reading order, and then you'll have to consider if you're corporately embedding sources and data types as well. So then that really gets into orchestration beyond just the simple data loaders. So I've talked about a lot of different data types and sources, and I guess Dan thought it would be interesting for the class to know what we actually see in practice. And in practice, it's a lot of PDFs. People are processing PDF in our system more than most other file types. So it seems like there's really a lot of enterprise data stored in these PDFs and they are more challenging to process than they have requirements for OCR and imaging table extraction in all different layouts. And then we'll talk about some considerations for evaluation before diving into the case study. So you'll want to think about interpreting and integrating this non-textual data. Like how do you want it to show up? Is it when you're talking about something where there's a relevant image or table, that's when you want it to be pulled kind of seamlessly. In your evaluation, you'll have to think about the size and information across data types, so across the text and images. I'll do a little sidebar for my training in machine learning came through my neuroscience uh, training. And there, I remember learning one day that you could have an academic publication that you're reading and the finding is like, this part of the brain is more active during this activity. And then you go look at the figures and they show the exact opposite. And this is not an uncommon occurrence, and I'm sure it occurs in other types of documents, but you have to look at how that information is synthesized because really the text and the images, they could be saying totally opposite things. That's a pretty challenging level of evaluation. And then you'll also want to keep in mind the latency of your system once you've added multimodal elements as well, because that could change the user experience from a text-based RAD system. So you might need new metrics or human evaluation to cover just some of these different elements you might run into. And now we're going to dive into our case study with Elena. So. Elena is an ed tech company. They have an AI slides and lesson generator. And so you just drop in a PDF and then they generate a slideshow with images and tables. I wrote a blog post on this, which is linked below. But on the right here is an example of some of the slides that you might get as you drop in a PDF or a code of the work. So you can see here that they have equations and images next to the relevant tech and they do this pretty much instantaneously. So it's really cool. I actually wish I had something like this when I was making my slide. I didn't think anyone has journal clutch. You could just pop in an archive paper and get slides using this this tool. And I'll show their little, hopefully this comes across, I'll show their TikTok demo. Will you click add attachment, upload your textbook, and then the, the images all show up there. It's really quick, actually. I saw them do uh, a live demo when we were reporting, but we were talking about the case study together. And yeah, it would be, I think, challenging for me to do a live demo of their product, but it's really impressive how quickly it works. Hey. Are your RAG applications falling short despite using the latest frameworks and models? You're not alone. I'm Jason Liu, and I've helped a dozen companies improve their AI applications. I've developed a systematic approach that delivers results. If you want to check it out, join my free six-week email course and learn the techniques I use in my own consulting practice. That way, you can stop guessing at what works and measure what matters. Just check out improvingrag.com. For them, the multimodal impact was 
that things visual aids are really essential for teachers and they increase information retention up to 60%. Sabir, the co-founder of Elena that we spoke to for her case study, he was blown away by the ability to extract or do a table to add these visual roles. And then for him, the organizational impact of using our AP for this, rather than building it himself, was that they could focus on scaling what they were building, rather than having to worry about scaling up and down with the that serverless API. So now I'm going to go into the recipe of how they did this. So first, they use our API to partition the PDFs and other documents into their constituent elements. And then they extracted this data, including diagrams and tables, which were which they then processed by an LLM chain they have developed that's proprietary. And then the extracted data was summarized and stored in a vector database, making it accessible for generating new presentation. Their code is closed source, so I'm just pointing folks to the different steps of code that make it possible. I'll go into a little bit more of how we operate that makes that possible before jumping into the code. So one, we're atomizing five into elements. So we are classifying different parts of the image. So instead of it all just being raw OCR'd out text, like on the left, we are showing where there's, we're categorizing where there's a title, a subheading, page number, footnote, images, tables, and all these different elements. And we're also grabbing a ton of metadata. It really seems like everyone has needs for different kinds of metadata. Some people really like having page number there. Some people like having the layout there, like the coordinates where that appears. And then some people really like the base 64 encoding of tables and images where they can then pull with reference to that text specifically. So for example, for Elena, they could have a text section that is next to an image and then make sure to pull that image based on the metadata. So this combination ends up being really powerful for multimodal RAP. So now we're going to go into the documentation. So for the first step in our recipe, the partitioning. So for our API that everyone should have a trial for, everyone, I guess everyone gets two weeks, but for this course, we have added extra time. It's, we know the course is pretty long and we might need time after to try various tools. And then in the quick start, you would just pip install unstructured ingest, get your API key, and we recommend using the ingest library. So it's just a whole pipeline here where you set up and it's just all local to local, which is the list. And you, you know, can add partition argument, like having the PDFs split concurrent to be faster and things that other elements of the configuration. And by default, we'll always have the image element captured. And then to extract image block types, we have just a little bit of code you would use after running the processing in our documentation here. So you're going to load that JSON file that you created in the previous partitioning step. And then if an element in the metadata, this base 64 in code representation, then you just decode that image data, and then you could just open and show that image. So just a very few quick steps that you could then tie into other parts of the pipeline that are, for example, maybe telling you when to call this image. And similarly for tables, we also have just like a very short snippet where if you have that table in this text as HTML format, you, with this example right here, you can just save that HTML to a local file and then just open in a browser that table displayed, basically displayed exactly as it would have been in the image, except that you could also now interact with the different values and different columns. And then their last step was to put everything in a vector database so that they could make presentations from there. And so here I'll just quickly point to the different destination connectors that we have. So uh, Astra, DB, Azure is another one, Databrick, MongoDB, Pinecone, Weavy8, Store. Uh, I actually don't even know all of the destination connectors yet, but there's a combination of kind of vector databases and other places where you can put the event and work from there. That's my little intro to multimodal RAG. Feel free to follow me on LinkedIn or Twitter for a uh, new output. Thanks for watching. If you liked that video, make sure to like and subscribe. And if you want to learn more, check out improvingrag.com. We're going to talk about the foundations and not frameworks. Over the six emails, you're going to learn how to overcome absence blindness, as well as how to fine tune language models, understanding diverse query types, improving multimodal RAG, and ultimately smart question routing and build a UX that collects user feedback. 
to check out improvingrag.com and fill out this quick email address at the bottom.